Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Sergio and welcome to a new Anima 2D tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys a new asset that I have created for Anima 2D. It's called Anima Skin. And this asset will allow you guys to create, manage, and apply skins to your Anima 2D characters very, very, very easily. The best of this is, is going to be free and hopefully in a couple of weeks, once it's approved, it's going to be up on the Unity Asset Store. So you guys can download it just like you download Anima into your projects. So I'm right here in a sample project and I'm going to show you guys what this does. So first of all, we, you can see over here we have a, a basic Anima 2D character. If you don't know how to make a character like this, I recommend you go ahead and check out my uh, previous tutorials where I go over how to set up the sprite meshes, how to set up animations, how to set up the player movement, collisions, and all of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So you see over here on the scene, we have the Unity Skin logo right there in the background, and we have Jump and a button to change skins. And we have three buttons, one of the, each one of them with a different text on the top. We have applied the police skin onto our character. That's the default one. Well, let's go ahead and jump onto the base button and see what happens. Boom. We have instantly changed the skin on our character very, very easily. Let's let's try Firefighter, and boom, there you go. You have another one, and Police. Okay? So, let's get out of play mode, and let's take a look at what this asset is. Before we jump into the skin management system, I want to show you guys the GitHub page I've created for this project in the meantime, so you can download it, check out, and get the packages for this tutorial in a very in, in an easier way than using than using the Google Drive links that I've been using previously. So let's take a look. Down here in the description you're gonna find the link to this page. So for those of you who don't know, GitHub is a web page that allows you to create projects for everybody to work on. And they're open source projects. So you're gonna be able to see all the code and you can change it, modify it, and distribute it and just get it out there. So right here on the page, first of all, we have up here the different files that I have on the project right now. Anime skin, that's the folder you want to download. I will show you guys in a minute how to do that. We also have a couple of Unity packages and a readme and, uh, and license and all that. And down here you can see the read, the readme and it's uh, the documentation, basic documentation for this asset. So you guys don't have to go back to this video and check it out. So right over here you see the variables for the different components that are included, uh, a couple of other points, and I will be expanding this documentation. So how can we download this? Well, if you're familiar with GitHub and you have the GitHub desktop application or you have an account, you can go ahead and fork this, um, this project if you however do not, there's a very very simple way to download it and that's what we're gonna do today. So right over here on the right we have clone or download. We're gonna click that and we're gonna click on to download zip. And that's gonna download the zip file with all of this inside. So right over here on the left we see it's downloading. So once it has downloaded we're gonna extract it and we should end up with this over here. You can see the Anima Skin folder and the two Unity packages and that's what we're gonna be interested in at the moment. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and create a new project. So we're going to hit on File, we're going to say New Project, and we're going to call this project, we're going to set it to 2D. We're going to call this Anima Skin Tutorial, and we're going to go ahead and create that project. So there we go, we're here with an empty Unity project, and we're going to go back to that folder, and we're going to double click on the tutorial pack. The sample pack is going to contain all the files that you've seen uh, right now uh, with uh, the whole scene and everything as you saw right now, so you can play with it around and learn how I made it. But we're going to be using the tutorial pack for this tutorial, so let's double click on that and that should open up the window on Unity. And we're going to head and import everything. Let's uh, check out the different folders we have. We have some prefabs, some scripts and sprites. And the standard assets, there we go. We're just gonna hit on all and import. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag, let's go into the prefabs folder and drag that plain Bob game object onto the scene. And there we go. We have it right there on the scene. And we're gonna go to the main camera since this character is a little bit big. And we're gonna increase the size to right about, there you go, right about 15 should work. We're gonna go ahead and right click on the hierarchy to the object and we're gonna create a sprite. And we're going to call this floor. We're going to click on the little button on the sprite render sprite field and we're going to select the square sprite. And there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and drag that down 
And we're gonna change the size. I'm zooming in a little bit by pressing Alt, holding Alt down and dragging that out. And then we're gonna drag it down. And we're gonna change the color to something like so, something darker. And on the main camera, we're gonna change the background color to something a little bit grayish, like that. Okay, we're gonna add a box collider 2D so that our character can collide with this object. And now let's go ahead and get started. The first component we're gonna be looking at is the skin manager. So we're gonna click on add component and we're gonna say skin manager. The skin manager, as you can see over here, has three public fields. We have the current skin field, that's just there to tell you what skin is currently loaded onto the character. We have the skin holder field. This will allow you to drag a game object where you have all the skins that you want to identify as children of them. So if you drag, if I create a game object here and I call it sprite, uh, sprites, I mean skins, and drag it over there, the manager is going to look into that game object for all the skins. Down below that we have the skins list, which is just a list of the skins that are currently identified. First thing we're going to need to do, I recommend you go ahead and create a game object as a child of the plain bob game object where we're going to put all of our skin components. This will uh, very likely increase the performance since uh, the manager doesn't have to look through every game object in your character to find a skin component. So let's go ahead and right click and create an empty game object and we're going to call it skins hit enter and then we're gonna add a component and now we're gonna be looking at the second component which is the skin component so we're gonna go ahead and add that and you'll see that we have two public fields we have the skin name and we have skin parts the skin name is gonna be a unique name for that skin in this case we're gonna be creating the firefighter skin first so we're gonna type firefighter and then down below we have the skin parts so the skin parts is going to be a list of uh, custom objects in this case we're going to let's say a plus and then new empty field and here you're going to be able to see we have on the left a field for a sprite mesh instance that is going to be one of the parts of our character so either the the head the body of the of any of the arms and then on the right we have the sprite mesh that we into a that we want to apply onto that body part okay so i'm going to head and delete that field and I'm going to show you the first very cool feature about this. So here we're going to be needing to add a reference to all the body parts inside our game object for our character. So we have, I have seven references to make. I have the head, I have one for the body, the two legs, the two arms, and the gun over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the inspector up here on the right. I'm going to click on the plain bob game object and I'm going to click on the plus button down here and select from selection. And this will make a little warning pop up. It's going to tell you that seven references are going to be added. And if we want to continue, we're going to go ahead and say yes. And that's going to fill out seven new fields in the list automatically with those references. Perfect. So now we're, gonna, we're ready to start dragging some sprite meshes. So if we go on the left to the project panel and we open up the sprites folder, you'll see this uh, folder for Bob and Firefighter. And here are all the sprite meshes that we need. We have the head, so we're going to drag that up. We're going to drag the body, left arm, left leg, right arm, and right leg. And this skin right here is not going to have a gun on his, head, on his hand, so we're, we're going to leave the hand field empty with no sprite mesh to be added, and this will make sure there's an empty sprite mesh in there and we cannot see anything. So that's it, you have successfully completed your first skin. Now we're going to go ahead and copy this skin, copy component, and then we're going to paste it as a new component, and we're going to call this one base, and we're going to go ahead and with the same references, create the base skin, Bob just being in his underwear. So we're going to start dragging the face over here, then the body, and replacing the previous sprite meshes that we had from the other skin. So we're going to do that with every field, and once again, we're going to have um, that field at the end for the hand empty. And now we're ready to roll. So uh, now we have created our two skins. Since the police skin, it's already, so we have all the sprite meshes for the police skin over here. Uh, since that one it's already applied, we're actually not gonna be needing to create a new skin for that as long as we don't change it. And in this way, I can show you guys another cool feature of the manager. We're gonna go ahead and drag that skins uh, game object over here for the reference. And just for the sake of it, let's click on apply 
for the prefab that way we make sure these skins stay even when we switch to another scene well if right now we hit play you'll see that nothing really happens we have our skin applied and everything is normal because we need to create some game object that is going to allow us to make that switch and make that call to the skin manager to make that swap in the skins so we're going to create a new game object a 2d game object with a sprite renderer and we're going to call it button and we're going to change that sprite to the button green and let's just move that around the scene let's make that be on the floor and we're gonna add a box collider 2d and right now i'm gonna be showing you guys how you can trigger that animation so i mean that animation that swap so we're gonna add a component and we're gonna say new script and we're gonna call it skin swap and we're just gonna open that in visual studio okay. so with the script open in visual studio we're gonna delete those methods and we're gonna first of all we're gonna create a public string variable which we're gonna call uh, skin to load and we're gonna set that equal by default to firefighter and there we go semicolon and now we're gonna create a void on collision to enter 2d to detect that collision onto the box collider 2d and we're gonna and as you can see just copy this exactly this and we have the collision 2d parameter so we're, first of all, we're going to identify and make sure that the game object we're colliding with has the skin manager component. Just going to say skin manager variable, and we're going to call it SM, and we're going to set that equal to collision dot game object dot get component skin manager, and we're going to say that if SM equals null return we're just gonna exit if it's null if there's no skin manager on that game object we're just gonna exit otherwise we're gonna follow along and we're gonna say sm dot load skin by string and there we go we're gonna pass the skin name in this case skin otherwise actually uh, skin to load and we want to make sure that skin to load is not empty which it shouldn't be so we're gonna say or so right over here, we're going to create those vertical bars and say, or uh, string dot is null or empty, passing that skin to load as a parameter. So if skin to load is empty or null, or if the reference to that skin manager is null, therefore not being a get comp uh, component inside of that game object, we're going to return and exit the function. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and load that skin. And before we go any further, I'm going to show you really quickly the documentation where we can see all of the functions that the script, the skin manager provides us. So the skin manager has, first of all, a few public variables. We have the skins list, which is a list of a custom class called skin then we have current skin which is a copy of the skin currently applied to the character we have dev skin which is the default skin um, and this default skin is created automatically by the manager when we enter the scene we enter the level then we have the skin holder which is the reference to that game component I was talking about earlier so then we also have some functions we have refresh skins so this will force the manager to look once again for new skins we have restore base skin, which is going to restore uh, the, the character to that default skin that was created at the beginning of the scene. We have load skin by string, which is the function we just used, which allows you to pass the name of the skin. And I want to emphasize this, it has to be unique. This is the reason why it has to be unique. Because it's going to look through that list, that skins list in the skin manager, and it's going to load that skin. It will let you know if it's not found, so you're going to see an error on the console. We also have load skin that will allow you to pass a skin component as a parameter and just load it. This, will, this is useful because you can just create a few public variables and you can just create those scripts and just drag those references if you don't want to use those skin names. You will have to add the skin name regardless. But it's not going to be as important to remember them and link those. Then we also have search skin, which is a function that will allow you to pass that skin name string uh, variable. And it will look for it in the skins list that we, that we talked about uh, a few moments ago. And it's going to return you the index 
of that skin inside of the list. Uh, if the list, if the skin is not found, then it's gonna return minus one. Very well. The skin component, it's uh, it's formed by two variables. One of them is the skin name, which is a public string, and that's the unique uh, name that we were talking about earlier. And then we have the skin parts, which is a list of this uh, custom class called skin part which has a variable for that sprite mesh reference that we were talking about the sprite mesh instance reference being the body part of the character to change and then uh, another one for the sprite mesh that is the sprite mesh that we want to apply very well now let's go back in let's make sure we save that script and we're gonna go back to the unity editor and we're gonna go ahead and hit play and if we jump onto this, boom, you see that we have changed to the firefighter skin. You saw it took us less than two minutes to set up the skin, uh, all my explanations aside. And inside those two minutes, we're also able to create this little script to switch to those skins. So over here, I'm actually going to change this field. I'm going to say I want to load base, and then I'm going to duplicate this button. I'm going to create another button, and drag it over to the left, and I'm going to change the uh, sprite to the button red, and the skin to load to firefighter. So the green one is going to load the base, and this one is going to load the firefighter. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it once again, drag it a little bit more to the left, and I'm gonna change the sprite to the blue button and right here I'm gonna type underscore default and you're gonna see that this is the default name for the um, default skin that is created by the manager so right over here we're gonna go ahead and jump onto that green button and we're gonna change to the base skin the red button would change to the firefighter and the blue one will go back to that police skin and as you can recall we have not created the police skin that was created automatically by the skin manager and if you go to the plain bob game object you can check it out right here current skin name underscore default and then right here you have skin name default and this is the police skin that we have currently and that was created once i hit that play button very well that was it for this tutorial i hope you guys liked it if you did Please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, leave me down in the comments any questions or any modifications you would like to see or how are you going to use this in your project and go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already and the little bell to make sure you get all the notifications for my videos and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.